Deck Breitling. I'm a Riding Warehouse sponsored rider. I'm a five star event rider, ICP level four instructor. I'm here to share some of my tips uh, in improving your seat and your position in the air over fences and on the flat. This exercise involves uh, four fences set up on a bend. Um, I often actually have a little bit of trouble setting this up myself, um, basically just because it's really important that you get the bend, the arc of a circle um, incorporated into setting up your fences. So uh, don't feel bad if you have to adjust it a few times. I tend to like to set it up on what would be a 20 meter circle, set my fences um, around 18 to 20 feet apart. Again, it does depend on each horse's stride. So obviously if you know you have a pony or a really large strided horse, um, it is an exercise that you can always vary. I think it's really important that you don't get stuck on numbers and you really do what works for your horse to improve um, in, in their training. So I tend to like to set this up as cross rails. Because it's an exercise that's on a curve, we really are addressing uh, the straightness and the ability to keep a turn and not lose their shoulders through this exercise. And how we can use our seat and our leg to ensure that this uh, goes well. Um, and we continue their training um, through this exercise by, uh, again, the cross rails help hold them a little bit accountable to staying in the center of the fence. So when I'm walking my distances, um, you know, it's sort of how long is a piece of string in this situation? How big is each person's step? Ideally, when you're stepping strides out, each step should be three feet. So in this exercise, I would choose to set my fences between six and seven steps apart. Um, again, ensuring each step is three feet. When I'm starting this exercise, even in an experienced horse, um, I really do like to set this as poles on the ground to start. So instead of setting it as cross rails, I'll just put all of my rails on the ground and ensure that I'm able to approach the fence in the balance and the canter that I would like. Um, actually with a green horse, I'll even trot them through it the first time, just so that we get to understand the trajectory of the question, um, staying on that circle, and then starting to actually identify how much of your outside aids you need to use uh, to make the turn. One of the biggest issues that we run into in this exercise um, is using too much of our inside rein, not taking our eye through the exercise early enough and actually you can often find yourself on the outside of the exercise before you've completed it as you fly by one of your standards. One of the other main uh, sort of struggles that we see in this exercise is the rider's upper body getting ahead. So this for me is a really good exercise on highlighting how effective your seat can be uh, in maintaining the balance. So often through the exercise, the horse's balance can get a little low um, in, in, as we progress. So perhaps the first fence feels pretty good and then you feel the quickness come through. So making sure that you start to engage your core and be able to use your upper body in a way that you can bring it back a little bit to allow the balance to come back and allow the horse to take their time through the exercise and not feel like they're rushing through it. So a couple of my favorite uh, sayings I think that I can say to myself or say, say to my students, um, one big thing is to feel like I can touch my shoulder blades behind my back through the exercise. Another thing is to be able to keep feeling like my head, my shoulders and my neck are staying away from the horse's ears. So I'm thinking more instead of just saying sit up, it's more take my upper body back really ensuring that you keep your head still. Often keeping your helmet still is another really good uh, trigger word to say to help you keep uh, on the right track in these situations. Because it's very easy to get drawn ahead of the movement and end up very much on the horse's wither, which then puts them on the forehand through the exercise. Once I've progressed from the exercise just as rails on the ground, we can then progress to putting up two of the four cross rails. I'll often leave the first one as rails on the ground and then have the second and fourth cross rails now up. Again, allowing for a little bit of room for uh, breathing space if we had a little bit of trouble through one of the cross rails, we then just have a rail on the ground. Once I've gotten to that point and I feel that I've done this both directions evenly, um, then I can progress to putting four cross rails up. This exercise can be done as verticals. Um, one good thing you could do is make verticals but then add side cross rail rails to help ensure the straightness. My favorite way to do it is as cross rails and you can actually make them quite high. So over large six foot standards, you could put your cross rails 
all the way up there on a, on a more experienced horse um, to really make them use their body through the exercise but not allow them to cheat by falling in or falling out through the exercise. So it allows you to really focus on the middle of each cross rail, therefore riding the middle of each fence. This exercise, again, I use as a warm-up often before I jump, um, and it can be used as an exercise that you perhaps just do on a certain day. You know, if you're not feeling like jumping fences, but you just want to do an exercise, the key is to not overdo these exercises. So perhaps four or five times through each direction, um, starting with your rails on the ground, and then perhaps another four or five times through as your cross rails could be plenty for one day in, in the exercise. I really don't like focusing on doing these exercises too much on the horses as it is quite difficult, especially asking them to sit using their hind leg, you know, in a way that is quite taxing. So it's key that we don't do these exercises um, and overdo them too much. Um, sometimes I'll even build this into a course, so I'll leave it in my arena and then I may jump it once or twice and then continue on to some other fences. Again, jumping other fences and you can even continue back on into the exercise incorporating it into your jump day. This is a great exercise for improving your seat and your position through your fences as you venture out into your course riding now. For more information you can see some of my videos at the blog at ridingwarehouse.com.